Welcome back to King 5 News. Today, Seattle's Mayor Jenny Durkin signed new legislation to help families who may experience a traumatic event, the loss of a child. It is called Bees Law. It expands the city's paid family care leave program to cover city employees who lose a child. Mayor Durkin joins us today to talk about this issue, also some other issues. Thanks for being here. Hey, thanks for having me. Appreciate and great it. to have you on the evening show. Thank you Congratulations. So much. Interesting seeing you in the mornings now, seeing you I know. tonight. Love That's it. That's great. Uh, let's talk about Bees Law. Um, it's, it's a huge deal for the city. It was important to you. Also, members of the city council passed it unanimously. Tell us about it. Yep, it's such an important thing. So we had a couple who had a child that only mm. la lived for three days, mm. B. Um, and when she passed away, because she didn't survive, she, the p parents couldn't have maternity leave. And so they had to choose between spending the time they needed to grieve or going back to their job. And so we didn't realize that this hole existed in our law. And by bringing this forward, we've now been able to change it for all city workers. Mm -hmm. And also what was really good news is one of the moms, Rachel, she, uh, her company has done it too. So I think a lot of employers are looking at this and seeing that there's this loophole that, you know, you don't ever expect such yeah. a tragedy to happen. But if it does, we've got to support people. Wow, you Good. give families That's that great. time that they need. Exactly. To do that. Absolutely. Um, I want to sh shift gears a little bit, uh, Mayor. Over the weekend, we saw a shooting outside Seattle's Van Asso mm -hmm. Community Center. Thankfully, nobody was hurt. A lot of people are rattled in the Beacon Hill community. Another shooting on Second and Pine today. Outline, if you would, for those watching at home, what the city's strategy is to try to reduce the number of violence. Uh, you know, we are working it really carefully. Uh, Chief Best and I talk regularly. Um, we talked many times over the weekend about this issue. We had been in a period where for almost two weeks we had no shots fired in the city because we've really been focusing on what are those anti-violence prevention matters we can do and how do we get community involved because community is the first line. Obviously all of us are very disturbed about this. Police are, have, they've got suspects in a couple of the cases. We're working it very hard. We're making sure that events aren't um, related to each other, uh, that there isn't gang activity. Um, but we want to know everyone to know that we're working really hard. We want to work with community. If you know something about these shootings, please say something. Um, and if you know people who are involved in some kind of altercations, really encourage people, don't use a gun. Don't go out with a gun. Don't resolve your conflicts that way. Uh, another issue that you're talking about a lot is RVs and trying to get uh, hazardous RVs and vehicles off the streets. Um, how are you going to do that? And also, what is it going to mean for people who are living in those vehicles? We have such a critical homeless issue in the city already. We have a huge issue, and what we want to make sure is that f right now, the what we're doing, our newest uh, law that we're proposing is there are some individuals who take RVs that have been towed away that aren't suitable for habitation. I mean, these are health risk RVs. And then they take them and they rent them out for very cheap amounts. It's like the worst of slumlords. And so we're making sure that when we tow those vehicles, we actually destroy them so they can't be cycled out into the population again. And we're also trying to do a lot more outreach to people who are living in vehicles. Uh, for many people who are in their own vehicles, it's the last thing they own. Mm -hmm. um, and so really, how do we connect them with services? How do we get them reconnected with employment or other services they need? So our first focus always is to really try to see how can we support the person who needs the help but at the same time, we've got a real public interest in not having these health hazards in the community. Can we get to a place where we don't have people camping on the sidewalks? Because I hear from business owners all the time, they're totally frustrated. Can the city open some, some tent, designated tent areas so that they can get them all in one spot and not just spread out all over the city? So, you know, we do have some authorized areas, encampments that we've had. Um, many of them have now become the tiny house villages. And we try to really work with community to cite those. I think you're seeing in every urban city um, homelessness on the rise, and particularly on the West Coast. So I can't guarantee that we'll ever be uh, have a place where there's no tents until we have enough housing and services for people. And that's something the city of Seattle can't do on its own. But what we are trying to do, as you've seen, is we are trying to make sure that those tents that are really uh, obstructions are going back to the places where they've posted they can't be or in parks. We make sure that those are moved, people are offered services, and that we keep those areas really hazard free and clean. It makes me think of uh, what you're talking about with golf courses. I know you're looking at our municipal golf courses and potential uses, other uses. Some people are concerned about what's going to happen to some of our golf courses. They go back to the 1915. You know, 1915. Uh, what are you thinking about doing and what do you mean when you say 
we should look at other uses potentially for these yep, areas. Yep, so first thing is we're just looking. And I think we've had these great treasures in our city, and we should have a conversation about whether they are the best use of that sources. And we may determine that they are, but one thing I know we need is a lot of open green space, which those, those things really provide us with trees and open space and something that makes Seattle great. Um, but we also know that very few people relatively enjoy or use them. And so how do we make sure that that is something that can be used by more people? And is there some portion of it that's close to transit that we could convert to parks or to housing and parks? I think we look at it, we have conversations, nothing's been decided. Um, I think that there's great value in having recreational opportunities for people. Um, but at the same time, if you look at the number of people that are using them compared to the growing city that we are, it's a time to really look at it and decide whether that's the best I thing. know people who golf would say that it's the municipal courses where you have more diversity, where it is more affordable, where you can have young people and older people actually golf at an affordable rate that don't have to join a club. Yeah, so and I think that's it's actually, controversial for No, sure. and I think it's true, and we've got to look at that because if what we're saying is that's the entree way to get kids who would never have that before, mm -hmm. then we've got to look at that. So I think we just want to have the conversation. Yeah. There's been no decisions made. Okay. Seattle Mayor Jenny Durkin. Thanks for having me here. Thanks so much All for right. coming Good to in. see you. Appreciate it. Take care.